Good day, this is Brad Kayla, PhD, and my PhD stands for Post Hole Digger. Yes, folks, today is the day that we are celebrating the last week of the year of 2020. For some, this is going to be awesome. Others will say, wow, I really missed that year. But the majority of people will tell us they are happy that the year is over. But what are we dealing with today? detox our soul to get the insight in God's DNA. Yes, when we have a problem, what do we really do? Do we worsen the situation by acting like a moron? Or do we detox our soul? See, there's a little program that I use with the computers. I've been using computers since 1983. I remember my first computer that I had really in my hands it was an HP. A small little box and it cost at that time in Canada $20,000. It was unheard of. But what you could do with it, and we were so excited. The one thing we had was a very small hard drive with a very small memory. And we needed to write all the software ourselves. In order to calculate how much 1 plus 1 and 2 plus 2 was, we had to write, write the program. And now today you just pop it in. Today, 2020, 40 years later, it's unbelievable what we can do. And yet we as mankind, as humanity, we still have the same problems and conundrum. How do we detox our soul to get insight in God's DNA? Let's check it out. And remember, my PhD stands for Post Hole Digger, to prepare a solid foundation for the prodigal son and daughter. Let's check out what we can do to help you smooth your 2021. So what do we really mean when we talk about detoxing our soul? So many times we run into a situation that we eat something and something doesn't fall well. You feel sick to your stomach and you drink some water or some whiskey or some coffee or whatever the drink of your, <laughs> of your preference is. And then hopefully somewhere, somehow you get rid of that ugly feeling. Detoxing has a special purpose. If you've eaten something or drank something 
and that fell the wrong way, you're trying to exterminate it. You try to get it out of your system. And there are many situations where most of us don't realize that we have been fed some real wrong stuff. This is a Christian oxymoron exposed by restorative justice. Now, a Christian oxymoron is not a curse word. A Christian oxymoron is just a contradiction. It says one way and it goes the other way. And why do I say Christian? The word Christian is something that I learned very early in my life. I was born, I got a couple of drops on my head, a slap on my bum, and I was a Christian. I had no clue what it meant because I couldn't even think right. I was just barely a baby. But I was a Roman Catholic. Maybe the same thing happened to you. And as you grow older, you go through kindergarten, you go to, to a primary, you will learn certain issues because they feed them to you. But how do you deal with deceptive and un programs to convey a great truth? See, the truth that your teachers knew was based on what they knew to the best of their ability and sometimes not so good to their ability. However, if I compare it with a Van Gogh, a tremendous painting, well known all over the world, most people that don't know anything about art will recognize a Van Gogh or a Monet. Now, when you see that, there are little strides, there are little things, brush strokes, that gets away the identity of the master who painted the drawing. And it's like an author's self portrait. And as it is a portrait, as soon as we understand this reality, we can also perceive God's design from the smallest particles to the in, in the universe, to all creation. We have certain similarities with God. And as much as people hate to admit it, it is something wonderful. Because when I was forced to really think about things, I was only 16 years of age when I got paralyzed. I had a facial uh, paralysis on the left side. It started off very innocently. It looked like a cold. I couldn't hear much. My ears were filled and it looked like, you know, I just had to wait it out. But gradually, my mouth started drooping, my left side of my body didn't work, and months and months later, I had very great difficulties, starting all over. So how do you deal with negative situations? When you are paralyzed, all of a sudden you recognize what you had before, when you could walk and run and do all the things you like to do. You never paid attention to it because it was normal. But when you are limited in your movements and you lay there in bed and every noise and every sound sounds like thunder and you have to start lisping and you try to speak the words that you normally just rolled out of your mouth and now you can barely make a form the words and you have to start all over. You have to learn to walk proper. Folks, I had to scare of my life. But when I was six, my mom had passed away. There was another scare in my life. I didn't know what to do. And so I dug with my nose in the books in the uh, orphanage where I was placed with my brothers and sisters. And for seven years, I read books and dealing with a problem that nobody talked about. My mom was gone. I didn't know why she died. All I knew was I had to protect myself. And I went into a mode of dig in the books and I love books because in books I could live out my fantasy of traveling all over the world and as I grew up I did travel the whole world and I had an opportunity for three years to see all over the world but what is that what is that defense mechanism how do you deal with deceptive and unwanted programs to convey a great truth See folks, when we are in our defensive mode, we protect ourselves, we protect our psyche, we protect our body. But what about your mind? What about your spirit? What about that part that is holding you back for so long? I used a software program for my computers and it's called Mechanic. 
And what do you think the real name is? It is not an oxymoron. It is a program that we use and it is like a system mechanic. It's a software program that takes out the unwanted programs, deceptive and unwanted programs. How do you get them out of your system? The system mechanic is a comprehensive software package that lets you ramp up the performance of your Windows machine. It fixes and speeds it up so that your PC will work automatically by using a patented performance technology. It's unbelievable. I've been using it for over 10 years now and I really like it because you don't have to go and dig into how to uh, learn software. You just plug it in and let it run its course. And if you have a problem that your system, your computer system is going slower and slower and slower, you just run the program, it clears it up and you can continue to work. Now, the same is built in in us. As human beings, we have a system that can automatically put us on hold, check our system, and then reveal to us what we need to know. But if we are not aware of it and we don't use it, what is then the result? The result is that you run into a major problem, you get sick, you might die, or you end up terrible in a place where you don't want to be. So if we become aware what the problem is, then how can we help ourselves to get over this hump? And this is why I use the term detoxing our process, our inner man. Because if we detox ourselves and get rid of the garbage that we have picked up, because so many things we assumed, why am I so confident to share that with you? For the simple fact that for the over a period of 18 years, from 1997 to 2012, I was one way or another for the first six years with the lawyers. And after we spent over $10 million and we had no money left, I was no longer allowed to have lawyers. And they kept on going, which is illegal normally, but the situation that we were in put me in an awkward position. I had declined the offer of a friend of mine, which I considered a friend because we knew each other for over 10 years. We did business together, we met on a weekly basis, we went on a bike ride, etc., etc., many rides, had a lot of fun together, spoke together, public speaking, all over the place. But in the process, there was a jealousy. My friend was a multimillionaire, lived in a 15,000 square foot home in London, Ontario, right on top of the hill. And when he saw that my business was picking up and I started all of a sudden doing millions of dollars, and he realized that there was more involved and that the, the package itself was worth over a billion dollars, he wanted his share. His share was nothing. But I declined his proposal. And when I declined him, he was so mad because he was the head of the Freemasons. And do you know how much power we have? And that was an unwanted interaction in my life. But unfortunately, at that time, I couldn't share what I'm sharing with you today. And so when I started with defense, it was okay, fine. You know, it was put before a judge, he threw it out. Another judge threw it out. Another one said, okay, fine, a little fine. And we paid them the fine. It was not a big deal. But then we had a major problem. I was dealing with a spiritual aspect. And I did not recognize that the Freemasons had an aspect that was not nice. They were an unwanted program in my life. And this is where we have a problem. When we recognize something and they kept on going till they got their brothers or whoever it was that they needed to bring us down, eventually we were no longer allowed to talk about lawyers. We had to defend ourselves. And for 12 years, my wife and I continued to fight in court because to me, it was just simply pick up a book, learn the law and defend. The first time we won, it went to appeal because the attorney general was furious. How can you lose against a guy and a woman that has never done any law, at least Canadian law? I was familiar with insurance law 
international law, but when you are dealing with criminal law, you are dealing with a major aspect where you can be thrown to jail for life. And this was an aspect in our lives that how do you deal with that? And we did what we always did. We always seek the Lord. We always pray. But in my ignorance, I had an unwanted program. I had learned and absorbed so many things that were not necessary that the only way to get rid of that was going through the pressure cooker. And as much as I disliked the four or five hundred hours before the judges, physical hours, it might be even more because we were scheduled for six months every day, five days a week before a judge and jury. And if you take that up, I think it's over more than 500 hours, but I keep it modest. And so under the pressure, something started to work in me and my wife. My wife developed into something beautiful. Her spirit was crying out to the Lord and the Lord responded. And the same as me, I was faced with the fact that I had so many unwanted programs. And it was the pressure of the moment that was tearing me apart because I couldn't believe that my pastors had lied to me. I didn't want to accept that my teachers and my professors that taught and shared with me what I needed to do when I faced this or that because I trusted them. And as I came to understand what legality meant, what the evidence meant, what uh, procedure but also precedence meant, I learned to look at the facts and the true facts are the evidence. And when you come to the evidence, what happens then? You finally come to the understanding that if you have that unwanted program, you got to get rid of it. But boy, was it hard for me to accept that a Christian was a pagan Christian, that Christianity in 325 AD was formed by a pagan emperor, the emperor of Rome, of Constantine, he created Christianity. And in essence, he didn't even create it. It was available in 325 BC, before Christ was even born. And in 325, it was the god of the underworld, Serapis, that Alexander the Great used to pray to. And they were called Christians. And the head of them was called a bishop of the Christians. It's amazing. So Christianity had nothing to do with following Jesus Christ. That is what the cover became. So they said to the Christians or the followers of Yeshua, you become from today, and this was considered in 325 AD, you become a follower of Christ who is your head, okay? And what if we don't do that? Then you go to the arena and we kill you, okay? What do you want me to do? From today on, you guys are now Roman Catholic. And paganism got confused with the followers of Jesua that followed the way, the truth, and the light. And that is how we became Christians, folks. Why did I find out? Because I was stripped of everything in court and I learned the hard way how to go to evidence. And when you find the evidence and the evidence concurs with reality, that is what is the proving factor, whether you lose or win. I lost my case and I was sentenced for six years times three, as well as my wife was sentenced for three years. But you know, the beauty of it was we won on appeal because there is another issue. It's not only that you can be judged, a judge can be judged on the way how he conducted himself, how his decisions were formed and made, and they were found excessive. They were deliberating on it and they considered that we won the appeal. And on appeal, I was set free. Did that mean that I was set free from everything that hurt us so much? We lost everything. My kids basically were on their own and we were just in a place that was not funny. 
I was in maximum security, but I learned to trust the Lord with all my heart. And as he was showing me what is important, to trust the Lord with all thine heart and do not lean on your own understanding. I was set free, first of all, from all those unwanted programs. Yes, did I make mistakes? Oh, folks, I have made so many mistakes. But God says, when you become, when you become aware of being a prodigal son or daughter, your father is waiting for you. He will guide you and he says, Seek you first the kingdom of God, and you will walk the way, the truth, and the light. Why is that so important, folks? It is not just lifting up your hand and say, Praise the Lord, I'm now a Christian. Maybe in some cases it helps when you cannot do anything anymore. But follow the way, the truth, and the light. That is the path that God's presence is available to us. If I follow a different path, I will fall in the unwanted process, in unwanted programs. And that is where people can excommunicate you, but God won't excommunicate you. If you follow God Almighty, you will find out that He loves. The love of God is so much more powerful. Yes, you can be the biggest crook, the most idiot, person that did the stupid thing in their life, but God forgives if you can seek His presence and say, Abba, Father, I was wrong. And Abba will say, well done. Come, my son. Come, my daughter, because God loves you. And you know, that is all I want to share with you, to get rid of an unwanted program. Become aware that as a prodigal son, you have a right to turn around and say, I repent, forgive me, Abba. And Abba, I want you to do one thing, stay in his presence. That is why he says the way, the truth and the life, because that is where God is. And if he said, yeah, but I have a wonderful church. All you have to do is sell so many little books and you will go to heaven. Folks, that is not the deal. The deal is the presence of God. That is what will set you free. Not how many books you have, not how many terms you know, not how many people or verses you know in the Bible. It is the presence of God that will set you free. Now, this is not gonna be easy. For tough times never last, but tough people, they do. So therefore, how to get rid of the garbage in your life, how to detox your soul, is to be honest with yourself and say, Father, I need your help. Open my eyes. Seek ye first the kingdom. And that starts with following the way, the truth and the light. God bless you. Bye for now.
Thank you.